in this video, we're going to do some calculations to see quantitatively how buffers resist changes in pH when strong acid or base are added. And we're going to compare to the pH change when strong acid or base is added to an unbuffered solution. So let's start with an acetic acid acetate buffer, a mixture of acetic acid at 0.1 mole per liter and sodium acetate 0.1 mole per liter. So equal numbers of moles of acetate and acetic acid in this buffer, and we're gonna call them A minus and HA for short. We wanna know the pH of this buffer, and that's essentially the H3O plus concentration. So the first thing we wanna do here is understand how HA and A minus are interrelated through the acid ionization equilibrium of acetic acid. So HA, the acid, reacts with water to form A minus and H3O plus, Ka value is given here, and we can write the equilibrium equation using the products over reactants idea that we've seen previously, and there it is. Now, what makes a buffer unique in terms of equilibrium calculations is that unlike a plain vanilla acid solution, a buffer contains appreciable initial amounts of both the acid and its conjugate base. So in the initial line, we're going to list 0.10 moles per liter for both the acid and the conjugate base. Because both of these numbers are much higher than 10 to the negative 7, we can assume that there's zero initial hydronium, zero hydronium present initially. So this equilibrium will go to the right because of the zero initial hydronium, right? Q is equal to zero. The reaction quotient is equal to zero. And so we'll lose HA and we'll gain A minus and H3O plus to the tune of X moles per liter. And so on the equilibrium line, we have approximately 0.1 for the HA concentration of equilibrium, assuming X is small relative to 0.1, which is a good assumption given the Ka value, right? Very small relative to the initial concentration. About 0.1 for the A minus concentration, because here again, X is small relative to 0.10, and X for the H3O plus concentration. So now we can plug these equilibrium concentrations into the equilibrium equation, and we arrive at the interesting fact that x is approximately equal to Ka, 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. And if we take the negative base 10 logarithm of this value, we arrive at the pH of this buffer, which is 4.74. And the thing to notice here is that the pH of the buffer is equal to the pKa of the acid. This occurs in any buffer in which the acid and its conjugate base are present in equal concentrations, as we'll see a little bit later in more detail in discussions of the henderson hasselbalch equation. Now what we're going to do is to determine the pH after some strong base is added in part B. So in part B, we're asked to calculate the pH of this buffer system after one milliliter of 0.1 molar NaOH is, has been added to it. Now the first thing we want to do is get a handle on what exactly we're adding with NaOH. It's Na plus and OH minus, and OH minus is a signature of a strong base. So what's happening here is we're adding some amount of strong base to the buffer, and this is going to adjust the concentrations of HA and A minus in a way that we'll dig into in a second. It's going to be helpful here and in general in problems where you're adding strong acid or base to a buffer to work in moles and only think about concentration at the end of the problem. We'll explain the reasons why this is at the end of the problem and it will become apparent, but one thing to notice is that we're adding a volume to the original 100 milliliters of buffer solution. So the volume is going to change upon this addition. So let's work in moles so that we don't have to think about that volume change until the very end. And if we calculate out 1.0 milliliters times 0.10 moles per liter, we get 1.0 times 10 to the negative four moles of hydroxide are what are being added to this buffer system. Now, that hydroxide is a base, as we mentioned. That's going to react with the acid, the acidic component of the buffer, HA, to produce more A- and H2O liquid, which we can ignore. So HA is going to be consumed and A- is going to be produced. Think back to these graphs of changes in concentrations when we add strong acid and base to a buffer. At this point, we want to understand how much does the concentration of HA go down and how much does the concentration of A- minus go up. Let's work in moles, so let's think about amounts rather than concentrations for the moment, and we will determine concentrations at the very end. For this purpose, really at the end of the day, it's pretty straightforward stoichiometry. It's a limiting reactant problem where hydroxide is limiting. 
And you can absolutely work it that way if you're familiar with stoichiometry and have sort of your own way of doing things. But one way to organize things is to use what we might call an ICF table, where we're not thinking so much about equilibrium, but applying stoichiometry in a systematic way, putting things in a table. So for example here, given the 100 milliliters of buffer and the given concentrations, 0.1 mole per liter of acetic acid and sodium acetate, we can calculate the initial numbers of moles of HA and A- minus in the buffer. 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of hydroxide comes from our calculation based on the volume and concentration of hydroxide solution added, and the water we can just completely ignore. Now, this reaction is going to go forward completely because hydroxide is a strong base. The reaction will go in the forward direction until the limiting reactant is fully consumed. And seeing that HA and OH- minus are in a one-to-one -one mole ratio, and that OH- minus is there in a smaller number of moles, we'll realize that's the limiting reactant. It will go away completely, and so we will lose 1 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of hydroxide, and we'll also lose 1 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of HA, and we will gain 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4 moles of A-. minus. So at the end of the day, we'll end up with 0 0.0099 moles of HA. Indeed, its amount has gone down. No hydroxide left over, and 0 0.0101 moles of A-. minus. And indeed, its concentration has gone up as it's been formed here. Now, to get these into concentrations, we need to realize that the total volume of the system is now not 100 milliliters, but 101 milliliters the 100 milliliters of initial buffer plus the one milliliter of hydroxide solution added. And so to find the concentrations of HA and A- minus in the solution, we divide by 101 milliliters or 0.101 liters, and we arrive at the HA molarity is now 0.098, and the A- minus molarity is now at 0.1. So the HA molarity has decreased. Now that we know these concentrations, we're going to apply the ice table method to work toward the equilibrium hydronium concentration as well as the pH. And one way we can think about the action of the strong base here is that it changes the initial conditions. We're going to use these concentrations in purple as our initial conditions on the ice table. The strong base has converted some HA into A-. minus. That's knocked the system out of equilibrium. And in applying the ice approach, we're understanding what the final result is once the system returns to equilibrium. So let's do that now. So we're going to apply that acid ionization equation that's here at the top of this slide and a given Ka value or a value that we look up. And for the initial conditions, we're going to use the conditions after the strong base has sort of run its course. So those concentrations we calculated in the first half of the problem, 0 0.098 moles per liter of HA and 0.1 moles per liter of A- minus in the mixture of the buffer with the strong base once the strong base has been fully consumed. And both of these are much larger than 10 to the negative 7, so we can assume that the hydronium concentration initially is equal to zero. For that reason, this reaction is going to run towards products, and our change line will look like this with HA going away and A- minus and H3O plus coming in. And at equilibrium, well, we can apply the x is small approximation here because Ka is much, much smaller than the concentrations of HA and A- and say that at equilibrium, the concentration of HA will still be pretty darn close to 0 0.098, the concentration of A- will still be pretty darn close to 0.1, and x is the equilibrium concentration of H3O+. Now we can plug those molarities into the equilibrium equation, and we arrive at this expression here. And when you solve for x here, we arrive at 1.76 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter is the equilibrium hydronium concentration. And notice, this is very close to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter, which was the concentration of hydronium that we calculated back in part A. Here in the bottom right, for the undisturbed, 0.1 molar to 0.1 molar acetic acid acetate buffer system. So the addition of the strong base has caused a very small change, actually, in the equilibrium molarity of H3O+. And likewise, if we take the negative base 10 logarithm of that molarity, we arrive at a pH that is very, very similar to the pH of the original 1 to 1 acetate buffer, 4.75 versus 4.74 for the original buffer. So the addition of this strong base 
has caused a change in pH of only 0 0.01 units. That's remarkable and goes to show you quantitatively how buffers work. Finally, in part C, we're going to consider the pH change when the same amount of strong base is added to an unbuffered solution with a pH of 4.74, the pH of our original one-to-one -one acetate buffer system. This corresponds to a hydronium concentration of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 moles per liter, but now there's no weak acid or weak base around. If there are any ions in the solution, they're completely unreactive with water. So the hydronium is sort of out on its own, if you will, with unreactive ions along with it, something like chloride or nitrate, for example. The number of moles of hydronium is going to be useful for us, and we can find this just by calculating the molarity times the volume. We're told we have 100 milliliters of this solution, same as the buffer system, same volume as the buffer system, and so the, the number of moles of hydronium is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6 moles, and we're working in moles here for the same reason we worked in moles in part B in the previous problem. We're going to think about the stoichiometry of how this combines with hydroxide in working toward the final pH. We also need to know the number of moles of hydroxide that have been added, and in fact we calculated that previously. It's 1.0 times 10 to the negative 4 moles, corresponding to 1 milliliter of a 0.1 molar solution of sodium hydroxide. Now what happens when we add hydroxide into this unbuffered solution of hydronium ion? Well, the major reaction is the reaction of hydronium with hydroxide to produce two water molecules. And these two ions react in a one-to-one -one molar ratio. And we can see from the numbers of moles of H3O plus and OH minus that the smaller of the two is the number of moles of hydronium. This makes hydronium ion the limiting reactant. And so starting from an initial situation with those numbers of moles, the change will correspond to complete consumption of the hydronium ion, losing 1.8 times 10 to the negative 6 moles of both hydronium and hydroxide. So hydronium will effectively be completely gone, and we'll have 9.8 times 10 to the negative 5 moles of hydroxide left. And this will be, roughly speaking, the equilibrium concentration of hydroxide. The equilibrium number of moles of hydroxide, I should say. We divide by the volume, the total volume of the combined mixture, the 100 milliliters of the acidic solution and the 1 milliliter of the strong base, and we arrive at a hydroxide molarity concentration of 9.7 times 10 to the negative 4 moles per liter. To find the pH from here, we can do this a couple of different ways. We could calculate the pOH and then do 14 minus the pOH. That's effectively what I'm doing here. And we end up with 14 plus the base 10 logarithm of 9.7 times 10 to the negative 4. And this comes out to 10.99, so quite a basic pH. Not that surprising, right? We added strong base to a mildly acidic, unbuffered solution. But check out the difference between this pH, 10.99, and the pH in the buffer system after the addition of the same amount of base, way down at 4.75. So the buffer is very much resisting the action of the strong base. This kind of gives us a benchmark for the action of the strong base. 10.99 is where an unbuffered solution will go. A buffered solution, much, much smaller change, negligibly small change in pH upon the addition of this base.